All right, 9 1 to 9 2 quiz review video. Let's jump right into this and get after it. So, number one, find the following info for a 20 gon. So, I'm not even going to attempt to draw a 20 gon, but I will draw the beginnings of it. So, go right here, kind of comes right there, kind of comes down. That's about as far as I'm going to go. And then I am going to draw an extension so that I can get the exterior angle. So, Whenever you're trying to find all of this stuff over here, you can do one of two methods. You can work from the outside in, which is usually my, my preferred method, or you can work from the inside out. I'm going to show you my method first, outside in. So I know that for all shapes, the sum of the exterior angles, for any shape, I don't care how many sides, it's always 360. So I like that because it's easy to remember. I don't have to memorize a formula. And I know since these, this thing has 20 exterior angles, if I divide that by 20, I'm going to get 18 degrees for that outside angle. So I'm starting on the outside. Well, then I come in and I know that they form a linear pair. So I know that subtract from 180, that's got to be 162. And then if I want the grand total, I can times that by 20 interior angles. And let me just cheat and use the old, all right, I don't need a calculator. 324, so 3240, 3240 degrees. So that is the sum of the inside. Each inside was 162. Each outside was 18. And then the sum of the outside is 360. So that was the inside out method. If you want to go the other direction, you use the formula where you take where this can be achieved getting the number of sides subtract 2 times 180. So you do 20 minus 2 times 180, um, which basically gives me that answer. And then I reverse the process. I divide it by 20 to get him, subtract from 180, and then times by 20 to get this guy. So you're always able to go either way. So as long as you can remember either the formula or the 360 exterior rule, you are in great shape. Moving right along, number two, the sum of the inside angles is 1980. So I'm going to use the fact that I have a formula here. So the sum of the interior angles, well, there's a formula for that. It's n minus 2 times 180. And I know the answer. It says it is or it equals 1980. And now I just have to solve the formula because how many sides, rep, that's represented by n, so I just got to solve it for n. So my first move is going to be divide by 180, divide by 180, and I'll get n minus 2 is 11, and then add 2 to both sides, and we will figure out that n is 13. So this is a 13 gone. There might be a more official name for it, but I don't know what it is. Next one, number three, find x. Uh, if you submitted this on teacher made, I did have a flaw in the answer key. I think it was just my fat fingers. Um, didn't do it right. But your first step, you look at the shape, and I know that this shape has four sides. It's a quadrilateral. So four sides means I do four minus two, which is two times 180. So all quadrilaterals are 360. And right now I add up what I have. Right now I have 100, 105, and 85. So 100, 105, and 85 gives me a grand total of 290. So, so far we've accounted for 290 degrees, which means we have 70 degrees left. So this expression has to equal 70 degrees. So 4 plus 22x has to equal 70 degrees. And I subtract 4 from both sides. And I divide, divide, and I get x equals 3. I believe on teacher made, I accidentally put 33. That is wrong. You are right. So no big deal there. Number 4, parallelogram. Find the measure of the angles. So we need to kind of know some properties of parallelograms. Well, when it comes to angles in a parallelogram, we know that opposite angles are congruent. And we know that consecutive angles, which are angles 
next door neighbors to each other, um, have to add up to 180 degrees. So let's kind of use that fact. Well, that means that this 80 has to match up here. So that's 80. And I know that the blue angle, along with this entire red angle, has that up to 180. So I know that C is 100. And I know that E, the entire angle, is 100. But then I have to see how they're split up. Well, 100 take away 43 tells me that I have a 57 right here. And that means I'll have a 57 up here and a 43 there. But they wanted this one. So the question mark equaled 57 degrees. All right, keep on going. What is the length of each side? Um, so I don't just want x and y. I actually need to find the length of the side. I believe on teacher made, I put in a box for the shorter side and then one for the long side. So my final answers are going to be there. Um, so basically, we use the fact that opposite sides are congruent or equal to each other. So x plus 8 has to equal 3x minus 12. So I'm going to minus the x from both sides. And then I'm going to add the 12 to both sides. Kind of did that all in one step. Divide, divide. And I get x equals 10. They didn't ask for x though, they want you to plug 10 in. So plugging 10 in gives me 18. Plugging 10 in here gives me 18. And that one turns out to be the long side. I guess you really don't know until you do y, because the picture might not be drawn to scale. Same game with y. 4y has got to equal 2y plus 6 minus the 2y from both sides. Tells me that y is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. This comes out to be 12. So you see now who the short side is and who the long side is. Moving on now, number 6. Um, I tried this feature in TeacherMade where it kind of had check boxes and you had to check what, what answered the question. It says, which of the following is not a property of a parallelogram? Are opposite angles congruent? That's yes. Opposite sides parallel, yes. Opposite sides congruent, yes. Opposite angles supplementary, that is a no. That is not true. Opposite angles are not 180 degrees. Consecutive angles are. Do the diagonals bisect each other? Yes. Are the diagonals congruent? No. You know, typically when you, when you have a parallelogram, especially one with a severe gangster lean to it, like this, you will see that you have a short diagonal and then you have a long diagonal. So diagonals are not congruent. Are the same side angles supplementary? Yes, they are. So there are only two correct answers to number six, the ones with the X's. Moving on to number seven, it says prove that this shape is a parallelogram by criteria four, which was on the back side of your nine two notes. Um, and you need to show that one side is congruent and parallel. So to show this, you need to do some coordinate geometry. We have to show that the length of those two sides are equal. And we have to show that their slopes, to be parallel, the slopes have to be equal. So that's what we're trying to prove. So I think on Teacher Made, I did the slopes of all the pieces. So the slope of AD, the slope of BC, um, and maybe I did everybody. I don't remember here. Um, I don't know. I'll do everybody just because just we're here. We might as well. Why not? And then I'm going to do the length of everybody, which I'm just going to repeat those players, AD, BC, CD, AB, and let's get after it. So let's do slopes first. The slope of AB, well, slope, remember, is rise over run. So it rises 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have a rise of 4. And then we have a run of 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have a 4 over 4 or a slope of 1. BC also, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, has a 4, 4 ratio. So that is a slope of 1 as well. So we have just proven 
that these two blue lines are in fact parallel because they have the same slope. So let's check CD and AB. These are easier. Any horizontal line has a slope of 0. And the other one is a horizontal line with a slope of 0. So technically, right now, we've, we've proven this is a parallelogram by criteria 1, that we have both pairs of opposite sides parallel. But I wanted you to do it by 4. So we also need to test uh, the lengths. And since we, to find the, the length of AD, you just create a right triangle and you use the Pythagorean theorem. So our two legs are 4 and 4. So we do 4 squared plus 4 squared equals hypotenuse squared. Take the square root of both sides. Comes out to be the square root of 32. And BC, because it's the exact same, is also going to be the square root of 32. So I do know that these guys are congruent. So right now, I have fulfilled criteria 4. I've basically showed that we're parallel and we're congruent. I think in teacher made, I had you do a decimal. So radical 32 is 5.7 if you round it properly. So these two are both 5.7 and 5.7. Um, if you want to finish it, the red ones are pretty easy because you can just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the other one is 7. So we've proved a whole bunch of stuff. We've actually proved criteria 1 and 2. So more than enough information. Hopefully this part gets you ready for the first part of the quiz. See you.